Hey everyone, Kerr, the artist here. So we all know about the Generator X crossover by now, right? Perfection. Absolutely perfect. We love you. And with a show titled Ben 10 Omniverse, you'd expect some more universe hopping shenanigans. But what if there was a crossover where you didn't have to change universes? All you had to do was give the other cast a call because they already share the same Earth. Of course, I'm talking about the Secret Saturdays. The Secret Saturdays have already made a handful of references that they share a world with Ben 10, most notably Ben 10 villains showing up in the Saturdays database, and Ben 10 returned the favor with a pop-up trivia fact. If you want a full list of references, check out the Almighty Pharaohs video, which I'll link down below. This episode manages to officially confirm that the Saturdays and Ben 10 indeed share the same Earth with this crossover. Aliens meeting cryptids? This should be a ton of fun. But unfortunately, unlike the Rex one, this crossover was terribly mishandled. No surprise, as Cartoon Network went on to butcher crossover next as well by minimizing the advertising, cutting the runtime in half even after the storyboards were completed, and ironically, leaving Zack Saturday out of the Mega Mix. So how'd they screw this one up? Reason number one, The Secret Saturdays was already over, because no one would want to watch a crossover with a show that was already finished, right? No, but for real, honestly, it's not a huge deal. But it does seem pretty odd to try to pull this off three years after the show already finished up, essentially having to undo a lot of the series finale just for this to make sense, such as giving Zack his power back, reviving the dead antagonist, and acting like cryptids are still a secret after a gigantic war. But again, it's not a huge deal. If this was the only problem, I guess you could excuse it. But number two, for Ben 10, this episode aired a whole season after it was supposed to. Ben 10 episodes airing out of order was always a problem with the show, notably spoiling the whole feedback arc way before its two-part finale. Had things gone the way they should, this episode would have been the first casual use of the alien since Ben re-unlocked the plug man as the triumphant key to defeating Argos. To make matters worse, this episode aired months before it did in the US, which is Ben 10's main marketplace, spoiling the entire episode online. The writers did their best to deny its existence because at the time, the crossover wasn't announced yet, but we all knew by then. But hey, maybe they could try to ride the buzz anyways, right? Number three, absolutely no advertising. And I mean none. I can't think of a single promotion for this episode. Not even those 10 second next time on Ben 10 ads we'd get every so often. For a crossover between Cartoon Network's two action shows, they didn't do a single thing to promote it, which was the exact opposite of all the hype that the Rex crossover ended up getting. I'm the biggest hero in the world. I'm the biggest hero in the world. The One Hour Event premieres Friday at 7, 6 central, only on Cartoon Network. Oh, and don't forget the Secret Saturdays had a crossover too. Comment below, does anyone remember so much as a promo poster for this? They really just shadow dropped this episode and left it to die. But fine, at least it might bring people back to the Secret Saturdays, right? Number four, this episode spoils the finale of the Secret Saturdays. And given the series wasn't and still isn't streaming anywhere, and there were no Saturdays toys on the shelves anymore, no future plans for the Secret Saturdays, there was no way for the Secret Saturdays to benefit from this crossover at all. There's even folks out there that didn't know the Saturdays had their own show at all, and they just thought that these were characters made for this Ben 10 episode. But okay, let's excuse that the show's over, they spoiled the ending, there was no advertisement, and the online leaks. At least you can just enjoy the episode as is is, right? Is what I would say if it wasn't for reason number five. The crossover does a terrible job at showcasing the Secret Saturdays. Not only do they change many parts of the show to the point where it's unrecognizable, but these characters are written very strange and contribute practically nothing to the story, leaving Ben to overshadow them at every turn. The way the Secret Saturdays were written here feels borderline disrespectful to their show counterparts and convinced non-Secret Saturdays fans that this is how they always are. But who am I to say, right? Because I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I've never actually watched The Secret Saturdays. But then how could I really judge the last part? Well, I had to call upon the lore expert. Good everyone, it's me, Crystal Moon 101. You might know me as the mole that died in Legend of Maine, or the meme maker of the ink tank. I also did like some visual effects for something called 5YL motion comic, but that's not important. I've been invited here because I am a Secret Saturdays fan that knows all about the lore, and I'm going to provide some knowledge for Rob here. Hey woo! Also, for those you'll be hearing throughout the breakdown, I have two birds, Lunar and Yugi, they will be providing beautiful commentary for us. Yeah, so fair warning, the birds do chirp here and there throughout the breakdown. I was able to edit most of the audio to remove them, but in some parts, especially during the beginning, I just couldn't do anything about it. They're just there. There's birds. <laughs> But as you might expect with The Secret Saturdays being its own show, there's a lot to unpack here. I also asked Crystal a ton of questions to try to understand the show better as I'm watching this, so I really wanted to take my time, which explains the long runtime of this video, so buckle up and help us answer the big question, 
why'd they even do this in the first place? If you want to see more of Crystal's VFX work, you can check out her YouTube channel link below, where she just uploaded a video about how she does the puppet effects for 5YL, with more editing behind the scenes videos to come. And don't forget to check out 5YL, the first seven episodes are out right now, and they're, uh, they're pretty good. <laughs> Written by Joel Selner, TGIS first aired on Cartoon Network on... What was the date? It's October 3rd. Right, thanks. The Secret Saturdays run into Ben and Rook as they're mutually hunting down a chupacabra strapped with a metal backpack that drains life energy. These chupacabras are controlled by Dr. Animo to drain enough life energy to revive VV Argos, the Secret Saturdays' greatest enemy, so that they can create an army of Frank Encrypteds. <laughs> And there it is, the moon! The moon. So funny enough, as I was editing this, it turns out that the first scene of this episode might be a direct homage to the first scene in The Secret Saturdays, as they both start with the moon and then panning down to the jungle with Zack on a hunt. There are no chupacabra sightings as of and yet. And there's the new Zack voice. Who was he originally voiced by? Sam Lerner. Who's the noise voice actor, actually? OG Banks in Shh. Omniverse. Do I get to know what's going on here? What's starting again? What stone pieces? We can still catch them. This can go from zero to 60 without breaking a sweat. And this is canonically five or six years after Secret Saturdays? If that was the case, Zack would be like 18 or 19. He it, The series ended when he was 13, so I think this is supposed to be two or three years later. Because he's supposed to be 16, like same age as Ben. The show ended when he was 13, so this is supposed to be like two or three years later. Did he age in the show? He started off as 11. What do you think of his new voice? I wasn't the biggest fan, but I think my problem was, was not the voice actors, it was just I wasn't used to the Omniverse style of writing with these characters, so the voices have grown on me a bit, but I think I still prefer the original. How about we just agree to keep it on a scientific level? Yeah, this episode only has one chance to win you over, so... <laughs> it did not. I, I will admit that. I'm not a big fan of this crossover for multitudes of reasons. Only yep. unidentified tracks. And there's Doc. Yep, there's the new Doc. <laughs> he honestly, out of them, didn't change like that much. He looks pretty similar. So I know it's like in the show, they got the jumpsuits. In Omniverse, it looks like they're wearing plug suits. Derek says they're inspired by Evangelion, but- uh, Evangelion. Eva Jellion. Yeah. yeah, that, you know, I, I know anime. <laughs> Their outfits are a lot more low tech and casual. Kind of reminds me of the original plumber suits. What's the transition there? They feel a little too referency high tech. For me, I prefer the jumpsuits, but I like the logo update. I think that's a cool make it look more like a serpent. Yeah, I, I already like the, the old suits even more and I haven't even seen the show. Yeah. <laughs> you hear that? It's coming from that clearing. Doc is now voiced by Bumper Robinson. His original voice actor was uh, Phil Morris. I'm his father. You want to fight somebody, you fight me. But these chupacabras are cryptids and they're attacking Bellwood's alien population. We found Bigfoot <laughs> and the chupacabra. And you can tell that's Shock Squatch. Did they have Chupacabras in Secret Saturdays? So they appeared in the backgrounds, which is funny because that means we have a version of the Chupacabras in Secret Saturdays, Ben 10, and Generator Rex. They, they get around. Funnily enough, Bigfoot never appeared. The closest we get is in the, the Secret Saturday logo itself. In general, not a lot of like well-known cryptids really appear in Secret Saturdays. It's always stuff that you've never heard before. Just hearing those birds, I'm imagining. We're like at a zoo or something, like a cryptid zoo. <laughs> and you're you're giving the I'm tour vlogging or at a zoo right yeah. now. <laughs> I'm hoping this comes out alright. I got uploaded as is, but you know, we'll see. Yep. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. I mean I'm not gonna ask you to kick your birds out, so we should follow the chupacabra. Oh, and Fisk. He seems like he looks the most similar to his uh, show yeah, counterpart. Yeah, he looks, he looks basically the same. Also, so from my understanding is the Secret Saturdays are, you know, secret. Is there any benefit to Zach recording this right now? There's been many times where, like, they'll be looking at, like, a screen and looking back at old footage they took of, like, events to uh, use for reference. Okay, so they got their own database. So if they think this is Bigfoot, they're going to add this to the Bigfoot file case. So didn't Max say that Bigfoot's just a guy in a suit? That's where fairy tales come from. They're all real. Even Bigfoot? Don't be ridiculous. That's a guy in a suit. Some things even escape his perspective. Fiskerton just captured Bigfoot! Bigfoot? Don't you watch the news? And there he is. Yeah. Now, I do like this design more in Omniverse, but it's also one I'm more attached to. How do you feel about Zack's new look? I, I actually quite like it if I'm not, like, looking at the suit. I actually like the, the longer hair. The freckles are adorable. I love the bright orange eyes. Ben Tennyson, it's an honor. And it's also cool that Zack is, like, a fan of Ben 10. I'm Zack Saturday. And Ben doesn't shake his hand. <laughs> yeah, Ben doesn't give a <laughs> Like, listen, I already did a team up once. I'm not, I'm not doing this again. So I fell off around the time Omni came about in terms of watching TV. Was there any advertisement for this crossover? I 
don't think so. I think it was just kind of dropped. It just happened. <laughs> yeah. It's also strange because this was supposed to be the season three premiere, which is why I'm reviewing it now. But when this first aired, it aired an entire season late. So maybe they were delaying it to try to prep for some type of advertisement, but they really just didn't as much as i can remember i can't think of a single advertisement for this i've talked to people who like didn't even know that this was a crossover episode they just thought that the saturdays were some wacky omnibus characters that never showed up ever again i mean they work that way too which is good for people who haven't seen the show but yeah it's kind of weird to just like do this crossover especially since Hero united has got so much to it yeah heroes united was hyped like crazy we thought you were bigfoot Thought he was Bigfoot. Bigfoot's real. Oh, or unless he did just run into a guy in cosplay. <laughs> yeah, it was just a guy in a suit. Max was right the whole time. He's so much taller than Zach, though. Get that a lot. Well, shock squad. There we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, now they're buddies. Dad, Doc Saturday. I've already met my brother Fiskerton. <laughs> We worked with your grandpa Max a while back. It's really weird how to like the Secret Saturdays and the plumbers would work well. And well, the secret organization in general, because there's a whole bunch of departments, including one guy is involved with Alien Matters, voiced by uh, Jeff Bennett, the, the one who makes the Galvin reference. Sweet Galvin Prime. All oh, those Saturdays, you guys tracked down That's all those freaky animals. So Ben, I guess, already knows about the Saturdays too. Cryptids. Come on, chupacabras aren't real. Ben, the you live in a world of aliens. <laughs> it's always funny to me whenever they still don't believe in stuff. It's like at this point, come on. You've met God, Ben. There's chupacabras. Crypto what is this? Is this from the show, this thing? They do have these little like handheld devices that can flip open with like a bunch of database stuff, but uh, I don't think this is, this is like a remodeled version. But these chupacabras are cryptids. This is the first time we actually oh. caught up with one. My partner and I have been tracking them for a week. A week? How how long did it take you to catch one? They're not that hard. Not even Shock Squatch could handle one. <laughs> Hello, you must be the Saturdays. Yeah, giant rats on Rook's home planet, no problem. But the chupacabras, you know, forget it. I'm certain that chupacabras do not exist. Why? What have you been chasing for a week then? For their own protection. It's our job to make sure cryptids stay hidden. Is that a self-imposed job or are they part of an organization? So they are part of an organization, like the secret scientists is what they called themselves. And they all have like these different departments. There are other people out there like us. They call themselves secret scientists. UFOs, quantum physics, paranormal abilities, all working together to solve the mysteries of the universe and the cryptids. That's what we do. What kind of budget do they have to like afford all I, of this stuff? I don't know. I think they're paid by the government. I don't actually know. It's never explained how this whole thing works. That makes this sense. also does bring up the it question does? of what is a cryptid in the Ben 10 world? Secret Saturday cryptids, from what I gather, are just like animals or beings that people just don't commonly know about or believe exist. All the strange exotic creatures that regular science doesn't believe in. They're called cryptids. They're sort of just like mythical creatures, essentially, that have a very unusual biology to them. And the thing is, is there, there has to be a difference because it's there's like one episode where Doc specifically talks about like what makes a cryptid in terms of building block in the DNA that he never discovered. And Zach, you know, he specifically controls them. So what makes a cryptid a cryptid? Fisk seems very sentient. He is actually. He's he's a person. Oh, why well, can't why can't he talk? He's part of an ancient race called the Lemurians. Apparently, the voice actor got a script for him, and he would just ramble it in a in a gibberish way that sounded a bit like English. She's coming home with us, right? Take the controls. Ah! Pretty sure he meant me. Yeah. But like a chupacabra though, let's say if they weren't kept secretive, if they were just common animals and everything, would people consider them cryptids no longer because they're just out there? But then like, would Zach's power still work on them? Like, it, again, it brings up that question. I initially just thought it was creatures that have like magic in their biology, but given how Ben 10 runs, that throws that theory out the window. Am I the only sane one around here? No. Chupacabras took up sculpting? We'll take him up to the airship, see if we can cure him. Now this was in the show. It's like their main like way that they move around they really like using that logo which funnily enough only zach really had oh on a shirt right yeah apparently it's supposed to be his claw turned into like an ear shape i don't know much about the claw i remember i saw a secret saturday's toy at walmart one time that was the claw and it would like pop out and i, I was like that's sick but i didn't know yeah, anything about the show it's specifically the the claw itself like the end bit is uh is something called the hand of sukalu was that a cryptid that got its hand Sliced or... No, actually, people think he got it from something else, but he's like this sort of like big gorilla cat man. He's the he's the one that actually gave uh, Doc his scar. It was the hardest battle I've ever fought. I honestly thought I didn't have a chance. 
I walked away with the claw and my life. Wow, there's a lot of history to this. It's a whole TV show. The control room's down the hall. Meet the rest of the family. Here's the other two. I think I've seen pictures of them for Zahn. That's that's this little gator looking one, right? No, that's Komodo. <laughs> Shit. Komodo dragon. Yeah, I should have seen that coming. Yeah, Komodo, I think, looks cooler in Omniverse. Zahn, I can go either way. At least somebody knows how to treat a celebrity. I like how there's multiple cryptids, like, closely involved in the Saturdays, and it's not just Fisk. Well, they, they call each other family. Like, Zack straight up calls them these, like, his siblings. He calls Zahn his sister, and, like, Fisk and Komodo, his brothers, and Doc and Drew even called them their kids, sort of kind of mentality. They're not pets to them. That's very sweet. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. there she is. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> is this room in the show? That's going to be the highlight of my questions. Like, is this in the show? No, actually. The airship, you don't actually explore too much beyond, like, certain rooms, but they did have a medical room in one episode. And this is my mom. Hmm. Yep. This is my least favorite of the redesign. The ponytail doesn't do it for me. It makes her look like way younger. Like she doesn't really feel like a mum. And she's voiced by Vanessa Marshall. She's in a couple of Ben 10 roles. Her original voice actor was uh, Nicole Sullivan. Zach, stop petting it. That thing tried to eat your father's head. Just because one remedy didn't work doesn't mean there's not a mystical solution. Who I know is she go oh, from yeah. Impossible. You let him surprise you with concussion grenades? Rookie. Need a little help? Are you offering? All right, look, I just don't want to lose to a giant flamingo, okay? Were people weird about Zach's mom in the show, or is this just like a Ben thing? Oh, absolutely. She, well, uh, in terms of fans, yeah, but in terms of the show itself, uh, funnily enough, it was only ever really Doc, which made sense because, you know, that's his wife. When have I ever done anything rash or irresponsible? I keep a list. Uh, the only other person that got a bit weird about her was uh, a guy named Van Rook, but that was specifically because he was a, a sleaze and her ex. Okay. I wasn't sure if Ben lusting after Zach's mom was like trying to continue a trend from the show or if they just like made Ben this way. I think this is supposed to maybe just be a joke about the fact that a lot of kids when they watch the show had like feelings for Drew. Also, I just realized she has orange lipstick, my God. And eyeshadow. <laughs> it's not the best. And like these things on her head, I don't know. She just... This design's all like over the, the place. Bolt earrings. Yeah, that's gonna be weighing. Like every time she turns her head, she's gotta be feeling the weight of that, like jiggling Ow. on her earlobe. And this is my mom. I got that milk money. Meeting you is the good. Right back at ya. Dude, that's my mom. <laughs> I like how Zach sees it too, and this isn't just oblivious. It's just immediately like, like not again. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what about this? Is there anything that's jumping out at you in this scene? We do get like a shot of Zach's room because they actually have a home base. It's They don't just live on the airship 24 seven. This does feel like how I imagine Zach over time, like collecting souvenirs from different cultures that they visit across the world. I'm so used to seeing like alien sci-fi stuff in Ben 10. So to see something a little more natural and earth-based, it's a good clash. It's Bigfoot. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> there that's he the is. exact same pose he's in at the, like in the opening. Canon. Do cryptids have any special powers? Some do. I can show you more about them. What would you say is like one of the craziest powers you've seen a cryptid have in the show? There's an entire episode with like an owl man creature that uh, hypnotizes an entire town. How do they cover stuff like the whole town getting possessed? I don't know. It's quite hard to say. Espelon was just like, right, we'll cover this up. And then they put it on the news that it was an entire magical act that went haywire. <laughs> like a magician's act. That's I'm a, like, okay, then. That's a stretch. Yeah, that wouldn't fly in the smartphone age. <laughs> You're not hiding the Loch Ness Monster up here, are you? Are any of these from the show? You've got the Chupacabra. I Is that supposed to be another Yeti? Because Argos is a Yeti. I think so. There, There's a Yeti in Ultimate Alien. Well, I know there's that fan theory that people think Animo, you know, took the Yeti for Argos, but we'll get to that later. And I think that one might be Mothman. It looks like they put a lot of designs into these just for this one episode. We'd never take Nessie out of her natural habitat. I do like totally this bit awful. of dialogue. Cryptids are uh, their own people, their own beings, and that he wants to give them, like, the respect that they deserve. I give Ben a lot of credit for trying to see his aliens more as, like, individuals, but it seems like Zack does that, like, tenfold. Like, he really cares about all of these cryptids. I mean, there's a whole episode where he hates using the word monster, because he's like, they're not monsters, they're just things that people don't understand. Weird world? Yeah. I remember that show. Dude in the creepy mask. VV Argos. I know, so, right? I know that, like, there's a supposed pop-up that says that Ben liked watching weird world but i don't know 
know how credible that is because Secret Saturdays came after the original series ended, if I recall. Classic was 2005. When was Secret Saturdays? 2008. It started in 2008? Yeah. And they were dropping all those Ben 10 references? That's interesting. So the crossover between them seems to be at a delay. Saturdays were doing classic series references after Classic ended. Now Omniverse is doing the crossover after Secret Saturdays ended. They just never really lined up. I have to wonder what it was like behind the scenes. I think they probably just wanted to do it and Cartoon Network didn't care enough to stop them. They're like, yeah, you can do it, but we're not going to advertise it. And they're like, okay, uh, fair. You, you can get your crossover. <laughs> yeah. You grew up on a farm. <laughs> a very serious farm. He had radios. Organs are functional. He's just a rock. What does that do? It expels evil spirits. I like how we're seeing them without Ben and Zach, because like it's showing their characters as well. It is supposed to be a reflection of how these two would debate on a subject, because Doc was more of like the science guy, and Drew was more about like, you know, mystic arts and magic and stuff, because she was raised by monks. When I enlarge the projection of our cursed stone piece, there's a chip in the surface right here. A good scientist stays focused on all his surroundings, not just one piece of evidence. So does this mean you're going to start accepting magic as a fact of life? There's always a rational explanation. So photosynthesis is now caused by wizards and pixies? Yes, and leprechauns make the stars twinkle at night. It was a figure of speech, science cop. Though I think it's a little bit exaggerated. I don't really recall her just straight up pouring goop on someone and being like, this is from some herbs I found outside. I guess I can respect the intentions. Yeah, I, I, I like that they acknowledge it at least to show like what the differences are. I wonder if the creator of the show, Jay, ever saw this episode and what he thinks of it. It, it sounds like someone would have to ask him. Like, honestly, I'd love to do an interview with him. Well, I'm not uploading this in three weeks, so maybe I can try to wrangle something. He's active on Instagram. In fact, if you go into his Instagram, you can find a bunch of like Secret Saturday's early concept stuff, including when Zach at one point was going to be called Francis, which ended up being given to a different character. I'll see if I can score an interview and maybe tack it on. So I did actually hit up Jay and got a response from him saying he's interested in answering some questions, but he has been busy a lot lately with projects. Totally get that. No big deal. But I did send him the questions. So if he ever gets back to me about the questions, I'll throw up a video on the rust bucket. We can go through them. But for now, it's just a waiting game. I know that look. You keep applying your potions and elixirs while I try <laughs> doing some science. Wow, very dismissive. Is this room in the show? <laughs> yes, actually. He has like this big show, like this big like open area that he like swings on the chair every time and is like, greetings and beyond venue. Love it. And this is the original voice actor, right? Yeah. And like, if I had to bring back at least one of the original voice actors, I'm so glad it's for Argost because he just, he does such a fantastic job. The greetings charismatic. Greetings and beyond venue. Argost is gone. Was it a cryptid that destroyed him? It was me. Uh, out, kind was of. <laughs> So the way he died was really weird because essentially, so you know about Zack Monday, right? The evil counterpart. I uh, you know he exists and he has like inverted hair. Zack is matter and uh, Zack Monday is anti-matter. And the whole thing is that when any of their counterparts are in the same room, the entire world starts to slowly break. Like reality shifts, like solids turn to liquids, that kind of stuff. So Argos stole Zack Monday's powers. And then how he died was when he stole Zack's powers. But because the two powers were not supposed to be in the same sort of body, they just exploded him. So he died by his own cause, essentially. He was really an evil yeti out to destroy humanity. I zapped him out of existence when he tried to combine my current power with antimatter from an alternate universe. Yeah. All right, yeah. And he's a yeti. He says that he tried to, like, destroy humanity, but honestly, that actually wasn't Argos' plan initially until, like, the last few seconds. He just wanted people to praise him and see him as a god. He just wanted to be a king, essentially. A yeti king? A yeti king. Gotcha. And yeah, the, the yeti thing's a twist. You only really find out about it in, like, the, the third to last episode. He's always wearing, like, that mask. Which, in this version, you can tell is very much a mask because they've got vents in it. Yeah, yeah. obviously looks like a mask. So it's much, it's not really this obvious in the show. No, it more just kind of looks like he has a really weird face. <laughs> okay. Let's just say he was my nemesis, but he made an awesome TV show. There's been an attack at an alien grocery store. Don't tell I wonder me. who it could be. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Bowers. <laughs> I'll stay behind. Whoa, whoa. We may need Zach's mom's medic. Medicine. How does he know about the medicine? He wasn't in the same room. Yeah, he's spying on her. He's actually known <laughs> yeah. about Zack Saturday's mom for like the whole time. <laughs> we should all go. Right, no doubt. What the fuck, bro? This looks a lot more tech based than like the yeah. organic claw. It was some kind of like weird bird claw. It feels really weird that it's now tech based. Could this potentially just not be the same claw? He says it is. Oh, well, that's that's lame. Or at least he doesn't say anything that says that would say otherwise. Cool. Does that turn you into anything? Trouble. His shop's getting destroyed and it's not Ben's fault this time. Ah! Oh. 
Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> they all run up and they do a quick pose. Yeah, we gotta get that screenshot. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Is he usually that strong? Actually, yeah, he's like surprisingly strong. Like there's an episode, it's like the very second episode, he carries a full grown man across like a wall. And he's like a liver. Drew, you were right. The chupacabras are draining that alien's life force. Oh, that's a dead body. I love whenever Rook fires his proto tool from his shoulder. Ben, why are you chasing it with your hands? Yeah, transform, man. Hey folks, give me 10 seconds of your time to let you know that it is hero time. There's a new shirt, hoodie, and tank in our merch store, which is linked down below. So grab one if you can. Now back to the breakdown. Ben! <laughs> no, no, no. Mr. Bauman would rather die than have Ben <laughs> get involved. Like, I won't trash your store this time, Mr. Bauman. I know you don't want to do this. Who's controlling you? Okay, now it's time. What the fuck does Zack do? And to do that, I kind of have to explain the backstory behind the powers. All right, give it to me. Essentially, a long time ago, there was a big dragon named Kerr who had the ability to control all cryptids. And he was supposedly supposed to end all humanity. And then I guess he died. <laughs> Zack's parents found a stone that was supposed to find where Kerr is. And it turns out that Kerr's soul went into Zack before he was born. And initially they think it's possession, but actually they're one and the same. It's more reincarnation, if anything. So Zack has the power to control cryptids. They say that he influences them, but at times it feels more like he can actually just full on control them. So I like to think it's a bit of both and that it's easier to influence them, but if needed, he can just full on control them. And I imagine that he tries to resist doing this often because of his respect for cryptids or does he kind of just do it? Oh, well, he uses it as a means to, cause he can use it to communicate with them and calm them down. Cause like with the influencing part he can tell them stuff like i know you don't want to do this i know you're just scared that kind of thing it's a way to sort of bridge communication essentially did his eyes glow like this too when he did it his eyes did glow but it had sort of more of like a, a fiery effect and his hair would move too so i'm quite surprised that omniverse didn't go for something more fancier yeah all this hair that'd be cool to see it flowing a little bit however the show does end in a weird way with his powers that i'll get to because they'll mention it and it's very contradictory to what happened. Oh, lovely. Gotta love those contradictions. To be fair, the show contradicted itself with how Zack's powers work too. Who's controlling you? So if, it, if that thing tried to answer, would he hear it in English? They might grumble or they might stare at him and he'll like understand their thoughts, their emotions, what they're trying to say to him. So only he can understand, basically. Drew and I need to get the injured up to the airship. Here we go. Welcome back, my children. So Dr. Animo was one of the ones that cameoed in The Secret Saturday, so I guess it makes the most sense that he's the one they bring back. Mr. Hey man himself. Greetings, Ambion Veneer. I don't know if I like the pink face. Just full white really gave that snowy vibe to him. Yeah. Uh, you told me specifically you didn't know about Munya. He just appeared right there. Oh, this, oh, yeah, this, there, is, there. this is a, yeah, yeah, this is a, a whole- Munya character because you specifically told me you thought he was just some random thing that yeah i just i just up. did it again <laughs> yes yeah, so he is the assistant to agrigor and munya to agrigor sorry I, I got <laughs> on the how do i spell that oh, okay yeah i see it now is that was that like a he transformed into this thing or, uh yeah so uh when argos was mad he just yelled munya and he had this whole like transformation he could swap in and out of it yeah oh and he was a playable fighter in uh cartoon network tko good do you no where? I'm reanimated, not death. Honestly, this is like the perfect team up. It's so good. I gave you the blueprints for this machine before my unfortunate run in with Zack Saturday. So mm -hmm. that means that before the final episode, because the final episode was basically Zack and Argos having a full on cryptid war, and he somehow got into contact with Animo and was like, if I die, here are some blueprints. Well, how do you feel about him looking like this? Does this kind of dilute from the character at all? or? It's hard to say. Like, I think I'm very neutral on it because I could go one way or the other. It, I think what kind of disappoints me is that it doesn't feel like there's enough like fusion idea. It doesn't feel like there's enough there. I know that the legs and the wings of like the New Jersey Devil, I'm pretty sure then the hand thing is supposed to be the Loch Ness Monster, so I guess she's dead. I'm not sure about what anything else is. I think it's only those two cryptids, so it's like, if they were really going to go for it, go for it. What about the, the big puffy collar? Could that have been something? Or I think that's the New Jersey Devil as well because of the red neck. Oh. Uh... 
Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I explicitly asked for a Yeti body. He tried getting it, man. He had to wrestle a Yeti. Yeah, he was wrestling that Yeti. He's like, boy, if you only see what I had to go through. A productive three years. I used chupacabras to drain the life force needed to power the machine. Animo can you could just casually drain life forces now. Like, I feel like this should make him like an insane threat. Actually, now that I think about it, this is probably the same technology he used in the Null Void. Because he was like draining the life force. Three years. You were supposed to bring me back in a month. Well, you know, he had a chicken farm for a bit. Then I decided to put my brain in a jar. I talked to some ants. My gym membership expired. Run along now. I have one Zack Saturday to dispose of. It's Whistle. interesting that he immediately goes to wanting to kill Zack. If knowing Argos, he would have actually just spent like a, like five months just regaining everything, setting up his power again. He wouldn't immediately go after Zack. Yeah, his TV show got canceled. Well, this episode was written by Joel Selner. I wonder if they have any Secret Saturday credits or if this because they don't have any Ben 10 credits so that was this episode written by a non-Secret Saturdays and a non-Ben 10 writer. Wow. Okay, I must have missed this when I was doing the breakdown, but it turns out she did write one episode of Secret Saturdays, a season one episode titled Black Monday, and the only Omniverse credit she has is this very episode. So one Secret Saturdays episode, no Ben 10 episodes except for this, so I still feel like all of my future points I'm about to make still stand. I just wanted to make sure that I got this correction in. Yeah, that's the thing is it, it feels like that they got permission and no doubt like watched the source material, but I have to wonder how much they actually got people from the Secret Saturdays crew involved. Yeah, why Joel? <laughs> Why Joel? Why Joel? <laughs> they wrote for Winx Club a little bit, so there's that. Yeah, 25 episodes of DC Superhero Girls. This partnership. He holds it like a baby. That's how I hold my cats. The little you smoochie. help me find most exotic animals to improve. So, does Argos have the same respect for cryptids that Zack does, or does he not care? Uh, no. <laughs> I want to take my new body for a test drive. Then you'll be needing this. Does that even fit? Look at the <laughs> size of his head. <laughs> oh my god. I thought my powers were totally gone. The mom says I have some sort of residual mystical something or other. Initially, they thought Zack was just possessed by Kerr. It's not possession. They're one and the same. So for Zack to lose his powers would mean he would have to die. And he does briefly. When when Argos stole his powers, he briefly died. And then he came back and he said that he did no longer had his powers, which makes no sense. <laughs> Otherwise, he'd be dead still. So... It makes more sense that he does have his powers. Yeah, if he was revived, because his powers come from his soul, essentially. So if he doesn't have his powers, that means he doesn't have his soul. Here, Omniverse is acting like her soul is like, it's left a stain on him, when really they're one and the same, essentially. Yeah, that... Thank you, Bird. I mean, honestly, I can't blame Omniverse for trying to come up with something here, given the fact the original show kind of contradicted itself on that. How are you going to do a crossover without the main character's, like, well-known power? Right. So how does the Omnitrix work? Terrible! Oh, yeah, yeah. I, love that. <laughs> I was going to say, we, we don't know at this point. They are police, after all. I also just realized that these these plumbers were just wandering about. Like, we don't actually see them do that in Undertown, do we? You know, for just getting those wings, he's very good at flying. How is that even possible? <laughs> oh, Fisk. You must be Mr. Tennyson. I kind of like the robot filter with his voice for the mask, but I also feel like if the show did that, then, like, it would give it away. It would be like, obvious. Yeah. yeah. It'll be fun to destroy <laughs> you for the second time. Oh, I'm ready oh, to kill you. Yeah. Was well, Zach always that malicious? Not really. Like, he never seemed too bothered about the idea of some people dying here and there, but he himself didn't really want to kill people, especially once he learned that he was the reincarnation of, like, the devil himself, essentially. Don't you like the new me? It's hero time! Yay. Bird. That combat is pretty good. The way he fights is so mesmerizing. Yeah, he, he's a worthy fighter. It's very much like realistic sort of like rooster fighting. It's almost like martial arts, but like very alien. Like I, I wouldn't be able to pin a specific style on it. That was just the warm-up. Wait, hold on. Okay, so can Zack control Argost since he's a cryptid? It was interesting because when he revealed he was a Yeti, he did make a passing comic to Zack saying, uh, if you had known I was a cryptid this whole time, you probably could have influenced me. So here it's weird because it's like, he technically could, but it doesn't look like he tries. And that might be because, again, his powers are in a, a weaker state. So it's a lot harder to control like very sapient and intelligent cryptids because those do exist. So what about Fisk, I guess? Because he seems a lot more intelligent than some of the others. 
he he can influence Fisk. He can influence all his siblings. I think Fisk is a little bit harder though. But Fisk is not on the same level as Argos, who is basically just a man. Yeah, I I feel like I would have liked like a quick like ten second scene where he tries and fails to take yeah, over. You could say something like uh, Animo was like he put something in Argos so that if if when he does run into Zack, it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, because like knowing all of that, it's kind of weird that he doesn't even try. Like that would be such a huge advantage. Get him! Ooh. Oh. That's pretty cool. Dude, How is he not body. dead? I guess that's why he wears the armor now. Oh, I guess life energy. I was just gonna say that, like the life energy bomb. <laughs> Did you know when you die, you exploded or turned to stone? There's no in between. He can't give that life energy back either. It's all in the air now. Yeah, it's gone. Some people are are just they're just stone forever. Argost is working with Animo. Animo? Zach would know who Animo is, given the fact he's in his database. Yeah, right. If they're already gonna know each other off screen, I feel like Zach could know Animo. It's definitely one of those lines for like maybe Secret Saturday fans if they don't know who Animo is. What's this thing? So <laughs> there is a thing like this in the show. Fisk does have his own, like, bike that he pedals because he's really strong. It's not this decked out or big, though. I can't remember what it's called, but it, it more looks like a, like a tricycle. It's quite funny. <laughs> Rook, we need a trike. I'd trade the trike and the airship for some credit the next time I save the world. Is that something? So this is an interesting thing because in the original series, he, he never actually cared about any of this kind of stuff. He does talk about wanting to be normal sometimes, but other than that, he never talks about, like, wanting to be a celebrity or being super well-known in the public. Like, he more just seems to have a fun time being a secret Saturday and caring more about keeping what they do a secret because he knows the importance of it. So when I heard this, it felt really weird that they just dropped this in the middle of the episode and were like, this is his arc. And I'm like, but why? Maybe it's an age thing. Like now that he's older. Like I could definitely see it be like a passing thought where he's like, yeah, I love the life I'm in, but I like, you know, sometimes I feel like I want attention. Right. But to like people who've only seen Ben 10, like me, I would have gotten from this that this is just his personality. Every time I stop a cryptid invasion, they say it's tornado damage or something. This patchwork quilt you call a body. Bunya didn't age too well. <laughs> yeah, I saw a picture of him earlier. He at least had hair and everything. So what happened to him? Did Zach do something to him too? Or has he just been like, like, fucking around for three years. I think his, like, fate was left unknown. It would have been neat, like, if they weren't limited to just, like, having this be, like, a one-and-done crossover to further tie the shows together more. If Munya went to hang out with Dr. Animo and became his assistant for a little bit, and he's been with Dr. Animo, like, his past handful of appearances or something. Men of our caliber needn't fight our own battles. Voila! Right, this is... Oh, the, the Yetis, my god. They're really loving these mutant designs. So it all looks like to be mostly the same things. Because I see the Mothman, there's the Yeti, there's the... Is that the Loch Ness Monster? A lot more New Jersey Devils. Like, this really implies that there's so many of them. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I like how it was just, like, one creature. Plus, this looks like a nightmare to draw. Together, we can locate enough creatures to build an army of Franken cryptids. You know, if... I, Anima was to built all these on his own time. I don't even see why he bothered reviving Argos. No wonder he took three years. He wasn't just trying to... He was getting multiple years. Yeah, he was doing everything <laughs> but, like, his one job. How do you know they won't turn on you? All Tennyson has to do to beat me is destroy this transmogrifier. Let me yell that louder. In case anyone's listening. <laughs> Thanks to the residual powers of the anti Kerr, you can control them. They name drop Kerr himself. So are, are they saying Animo put the anti Kerr into VVR ghosts or it's hard to say because wouldn't that mean it'd be as weak as Zax's as well in which he shouldn't be able to control an entire army like something I appreciate was when they did do the whole war Zach was actually doing really well because he had the, these powers for a long time whereas Argos only got them like last Monday <laughs> ah Zach Monday yep no uh... <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely a cryptid in there. <laughs> he didn't wait for Rook to get out of the way. <laughs> like, Fisk is so much more violent in this. It's disturbing. <laughs> Everyone seems to be out of character. Welcome to Animo's lab. Looks like he took off. Ah, uh, yes. A to... pointing to the sun. Argos handwriting. <laughs> Argos handwriting. <laughs> it's a big freaking arrow. This is what it looks like when you try to write with a giant dragon hand. <laughs> Figured out how to bring himself back using the combined life force of cryptids and aliens. Yeah, he would have had to have this contingency like long planned. Maybe the reaction created its own interference pattern. 
sending reverse waveforms back through the original conduits. I do like how Zack's smart, though. I'm so used to Ben just, like, not knowing anything. So, yeah, it's quite refreshing, because it's like, sure, when the show starts, he, he can be naive and a little bit dumb at times, but he he very much was grown up around scientists, so he does know what he's talking about a lot of the time, which, yeah, is very opposite to Ben. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. I'm not getting any of this either. Don't worry, big guy. And then this happens. Brilliant. Even Fisk gets it. I just looked into his voices, voiced originally by Diedrich Bader, who I known as Batman in a couple of different shows, and now he's Corey Burton, who was just Malware. <laughs> malware has become ape. If we reverse the field polarity, <laughs> that just might work. <laughs> I love that this did that just to me with Ben. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I still sensing a cryptid in here? Because Fisk is right there. Oh, this is where the Spider-Man Munya shows up. This is a cool transformation. I like this. <laughs> it's instantly murder. <laughs> Like, actually, like, from Ben's perspective, because Zach just told him a whole bunch of stuff about how cryptids aren't, like, necessarily dangerous. All Zach said was, there's still a cryptid here. Ben saw one and was immediately like, all right, let's burn it. <laughs> <laughs> Ben's in, in a constant state of bloodlust. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> how is that? Yeah, he's getting thrown against the wall. This is, like, the fourth time. Oh, my God. Zach's just been tossed around in all these fights. He really contributes nothing. Yeah, I feel like I still haven't really seen him, like, do much aside from do the claw thing for a second. It's always Ben who kind of has to jump in. And yeah, you'd think in the crossover, they'd want to, like, dedicate as much time as they could to showing off the new characters. He's just standing there, too. Oh. <laughs> oh. Over and over <laughs> again, Jesus. Oh, that thing flashes. Yeah, the whole freaking thing <laughs> lights up. Better hope he's not undercover when that's happening. Attacking the airship. He's got an old school phone too. No. no. We evacuated everyone before our guys made it to the ship. All four of us. So glad you're okay, Mr. Saturday. Gosh. My dad's okay too. Zach's just already sick of him. One of those things where it's like in the writer's room, they clearly thought this was funny. And then when you watch it, you're like, this is uncomfortable. Attack! Let's do this again. Is he going to do something this time? <laughs> Oh man, it lasted one sec. <laughs> I was so ready for him to like be useful and then boop. So it takes being picked up from Argos to get knocked out, but not like being thrown into No, like, no, him slam place. him against a brick wall all you want, but don't let him get smacked by Argos. Oh, uh, you get to see Drew's fire sword here. <laughs> I remember seeing a clip where her fire sword like had like little rivets that would pop out or something, like like flame pictures. Tibetan fire sword. Essentially, it's like a solar panel thing. So when the when the thing goes up, she can absorb like light and sunlight to create a firestorm. Yeah, this is just a glowing sword. Put him down, you. Ben's like, ah, oh, here we go again. I gotta do all the work. It looked like he shot Zach point blank. Yeah, I was gonna say when I first watched this, I was like, did he just obliterate Zach? Problem solved. <laughs> Yeah, her sword looks lame. Yeah, and Doc doesn't have his glove. Cause he, he had like a gauntlet thing that could do a bunch of different powers. Grab the boys and don't stop running until you're on board the airship. Again, Ben doing all the work. Yep. This is like the opposite of the, the Sea of Ish video where Ben was useless. <laughs> That was cool though, that the chain reaction. Damn, Shock's watch is powerful here. He just one shot everybody and protected the Saturdays all in one move. This is gonna be very disappointing as a Saturdays fan. Bonjour. There it is, that's the glove. So I guess it's just programmed into his suit now? The original one, it could be slipped off. It was kind of like cloth in a way where you could slip it on and then it would tighten around your fist. Everything you're saying about the show makes it sound so much cooler than what I get in this episode. Now you know why I'm disappointed. <laughs> Leave them alone! This is between us! Zach, you've well. already failed enough times already. <laughs> get them, boys! <laughs> Man, these chupacabras there are so OP. There he is against the wall. Against the wall. Yep. You won't win. You look gross. See, this would have been a perfect time for him to try to possess him or something. Like, use your power, Zach. Oh, he didn't. Wow, we don't even see him. If we can siphon the energy back out of him, it'll shut him down and free the cryptids. The solution's so easy, too. Ben's like, oh, yeah, I can save the day. Watch how easy it is for me to solve your problems. So you need an alien who can channel energy? I think I know just the guy. Chroma Stone? You can be replaced by a chimpanzee with a sewing machine. 
Anima walks off. I don't have a comeback for that. Hey, oh yeah. They exist. Not again! <laughs> Like, the, that shot just looks so pathetic. They're, like, cornered by two rats, essentially, and they're, like, backed up against a wall. Yeah, she's got a flame sword, and he's got a power glove, and they're like, oh, God, no, these tiny little inconveniences. Literally, in the first episode, you see Doc catch an entire boulder and toss it. Yeah, I, I gotta see those Saturdays. Now their eyes, like, stop glowing as if they've been glowing the whole time. Late. Oh. Oh, 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 the chin! <laughs> There's no armor protecting that. In production order, this is the first time we see 16-year-old Ben use feedback. Yeah, it wasn't that a whole thing where it's like, no, it wasn't aired out of order, was it? This episode was aired out of order. It was aired in season four instead of right now. But also in store 23, Ben uses feedback in the beginning. And that aired before the two-part showdown finale. <laughs> Guess he always had him. He was complaining about nothing. So this is supposed to be feedback's first like casual use again, which I I guess it kind of works. I'll have my revenge. So what's he? He's absorbing Kerr, anti Kerr power, or now Ben can control cryptids. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's life energy. I, so I guess feedback can just drain people. Yeah. Like a vampire. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Ben, no, the life energy. <laughs> Are they arresting Reporters the cryptids? Yes, they are! Oh my god. <laughs> These are like wild animals that are mind controlled. Reporters will be here soon. Ready for that limelight? Thanks, Ben. Our work has to stay secret. Animals See, that, not the that only entire one plot just cryptids. gets dropped. They bring it up in the middle of the episode and then they do nothing with it and then they're just like, Oh yeah, by the way, Zach, he wanted to talk to the reporters, right? And you're like, oh. Oh, yeah, there. He didn't even really have some type of influence or, like, journey to go on to make him feel differently. Like, he doesn't interact with, like, the public in any way. It's always, like, this entire street is just full of no one. Yeah, it was basically just, like, two senses. Hey, I want to be famous? Actually, no, I don't. That's not a fucking arc. It's been great saving the world with you. <laughs> you too. And your mom. <laughs> <laughs> that almost sounds like an insult. And your mom. Hey, Zach, say hi to your mom for me. One last thing. Picture with you as an alien. Rook, Zahn, and Komodo don't get to be in the photo. All right, well, that's that. So after watching that and now having me do a lot, bunch of lore dumping, how do you feel about this crossover now? I feel like I like this episode a lot less now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. I always felt like this episode was interesting because I felt like I was getting informed on a show that I didn't know about. Kind of like what I try to do with 5YL where I make it accessible to people who might not have seen one or the other show. But now it just sounds like I didn't get anything, so. It does something that like feels like it should be hype, which is, you know, the Saturdays I'm being are now canonically in the same world. It's not just a, you know, a Rex thing where it's a different dimension. It's like, I get nothing from it and like, I've always always been vocal about the fact that I have never liked the idea of the Secret Saturdays being in the same world as Ben and one of the reasons why is because when people talk about it it's more people being like oh Zack is in Ben's world instead of Ben is in Zack's world. It makes the Secret Saturdays feels like it comes second and the show is so great and it, I, I really don't like to put it second to Ben 10. I totally understand that now because especially with the way that they treat Zack in this episode he doesn't really show off his powers he doesn't show off his combat abilities he's barely a character. It feels such like a, a disservice to us and i don't want to sound mean to the writers but like zach in his original show is such a deep character like he starts off as the classic like oh the kid who wants to get involved with everything a little bit of a rascal but he goes through this entire arc where he questions if he can stay good or if he's going to be evil if fate is real that kind of thing and can he fight it and it's it's so complex to watch a child have to deal with that i feel like a, a major motivation to this crossover was just to try to pay off all of those ben 10 references in secret saturdays it seems like a lot of what omniverse does is how do i put this without sounding mean it, it's like a lot of this Sometimes they just want to prove a point just for the hell of it. Like to briefly bring up a controversial subject, the whole making Kevin a mutant thing. And I love the Cervantes arc, but even if they were going to do all that, which they did, it doesn't come back. It doesn't mean anything. It's not like now that Kevin sees that he's not an Osmosian anymore, now he's a mutant. It does nothing. And then it's literally never brought up again. It was doing it just to say it. And that's what this felt like. It's not like the Saturdays ever come back. The cryptids are never mentioned again. Well, Drew has that cameo, but like. Yeah, the, but that we don't talk 
joke about that cameo. <laughs> Rex is in another dimension, but this could have been like a whole solid like secondary cast that they can dip into every now and then. It's just the problem of like when you introduce these two different shows into one universe, it brings up so many questions like how did Ben not hear about the cryptid war? What is a cryptid in Ben 10? All that kind of shenanigans. And you don't really get an answer to any of it. What was the history with Max? Like how come Max doesn't believe in Bigfoot if he's worked with the Where Saturdays was Max before? in this episode? Yeah, where was Max? Yeah, I don't know. It, it just felt like they did it just to, to say the Saturdays exist in Ben 10's universe and now let's never talk about it. I usually figure out the ratings like as I'm editing, but I can't imagine this is gonna do well. Like the characterization already sounds like it's gonna be like a two at best. It's, it's definitely one of those shows that you'd have to like watch to really understand it because the Secret Saturdays writing is so like so well done. Like the family dynamics feel so believable. Each of these characters feel like their own people who have gone through their own journeys. Thanks for coming on this breakdown. It, I feel like your knowledge on the Secret Saturdays definitely enhanced my perspective on this series. It's, it's so surreal being here because I remember when you first started the breakdowns, I had just joined the server. So being here, allowing me to lore dump essentially has been quite fun. Okay, so we've already been here for like over 40 minutes, right? I'm just going to breeze through the ratings. Plot's going to get a two. Animo's entire plan was to revive Argos so that he can create an army of cryptids, but he already did that. So what the hell? Sure, the transmogrifier only works on lower level cryptids, but remember those mind controlled headbands? What happened to those? Also, you know, everything else that we've talked about. It's just, this was a really weird plot. And even if I didn't care about the Saturdays, which I didn't before this breakdown, it's just, eh. Characterization is also a two. The Saturdays, we've already gone in depth about how they're not really written that well. And Ben and Rook are kind of just like breezing through the episode, tagging along. Everybody feels a little bit flanderized here. <laughs> I just didn't find anybody enjoyable in this episode. Visuals is a three. Aside from the weird plug suits, the Saturdays do look pretty cool in the Omniverse art style along with all the cryptids. It was also nice seeing feedback again for the first time, but that's about the extent of it. Fights were lame. Everyone kept sidelining each other. Nothing really visually memorable is in this episode aside from like Zack's hair. Importance is a one. It's borderline a zero, but it's like another crossover. So I'll throw it a point to be generous, but you can totally skip this and be fine. And entertaining, it's a two. It's really not that rewatchable. For Ben 10 fans, it's got nothing to really hook you. For Secret Saturdays fans, they butcher the characters. It's more of interesting than entertaining. So that's gonna leave this episode off with a 10 out of 25. Let's move on to the final thoughts. So Tom Perkins did some work on this episode and I gotta say his Argos design is miles better than what we got officially. Maybe change the face a little bit so his face is at least more recognizable as Argos, but this looks so much cooler. Tom actually did a lot of concept work on the cryptids, presumably so that the other character designers can mix and match them for the Franked cryptids. And you can actually see a lot of Tom's artwork or what was strongly referenced from over on Zack's monitor. And strangely, Munya's red eye switches sides in the Omniverse episode. I don't know if that was a mistake or not, or whatever that was. It's also allegedly Cartoon Network's first show aired in HD, which is ironic as it's so hard to find a decent quality clip anywhere online. Also, their toys are super loud to the point where Mattel had got complaints about it. And lastly, on a podcast with series creator Jay, he said he did enjoy the episode despite our own opinions on it, and compared it to having a song he wrote covered by another band. But anyways, for this week's poll, I want to know how many of y'all actually watched The Secret Saturdays, and if you did, did you enjoy this crossover? Let me know in the community tab when this video goes live. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend, and as always, keep it fizzy.